Today we're checking out some of Jurassic World's best carnivore figures and arranging them from biggest all the way to the smallest. Plus, I've got some new ones that we're gonna check out as well. The first and largest figure is this super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. It has the dark orange body with the brown coloring on top, tons of little spikes, and the huge horns on its head. Next up in size is this super colossal Velociraptor blue figure. This figure features the classic blue stripe down the side, and has fully posable arms, legs, and a jaw too. Next up in size is another Velociraptor blue figure, but this one is a bit different. This figure is battery operated, so let's see what happens when we turn it on. That is pretty cool. It blinks and its eyes move, and it even has sound effects. Moving on to the next in size, let's go with this custom colored Spinosaurus figure. This figure features way more intricate and cool coloring than the original Mattel figure featured. It features posable arms, legs, and a tail, and even the neck and the jaw. Let's set this figure down next to the robotic Velociraptor blue figure. Next up, why don't we go with this Terran T-Rex figure. This T-Rex has some of the classic brown and tan coloring, and best of all, it features an awesome tearing feature when you press the button on its back. Look at that jaw-chomping action. And we're gonna set this down as the next biggest dinosaur in this carnivore collection. Over here is another Terran T-Rex, but this one was actually custom colored. Let's set them down side by side so we can see the color differences. This one is a lot darker and it actually has a lot more battle damage painted all over its body. And look at that, even some more battle damage on the other side. That is really cool. Let's set this down next in line. For the next in size, we're gonna go with this camouflage T-Rex figure. This is one of my favorite custom colored dinosaurs because of this really cool green camo color that has all over its body. And this figure has a chomping action when you move its tail and a roaring action too. This figure is super cool, so let's set this as the next biggest dinosaur. For the next biggest carnivore figure, we're gonna go with this Camp Cretaceous Epic Roarin' T-Rex. This figure has the classic tan body, and it features a button on its tail for a roaring and chomping action. This one is definitely cool, so let's set this down next in size. Looks like we've got a few more T-Rex figures in here. Here is another green T-Rex, but this one isn't custom colored. This is actually how it came. It's got some black detailing along the top of its head, and it has a button on the top of its head for the chomping and roaring action. Plus, its arms and legs and tail and neck are fully posable, just like many of these other T-Rex figures. All right, here might be one of my last T-Rex figures in this carnivore collection. This one is the classic bright orange, and it features opposable arms, legs, tail, neck, and jaw too. Why don't we dig into this one next? This is part of the new epic attack series from Jurassic World. This is the battle chomping Carnotaurus. And here it is. It looks like it has three different action buttons on this Carnotaurus figure. The first two are light and sound effect buttons that you can push for different sounds. So depending on how many times you press these buttons, it has different sound effects. And the third button is a classic chomping action button. The color and texturing design is pretty similar to the older Carnotaurus figures. It's mostly that clay red orange color. It has some brown detailing throughout. And of course, it's got the bright yellow eyes. Overall, this figure is pretty cool. I love the fact that there are different sound effects and different battle damage buttons. All right, let's set this next in line as the next largest carnivore figure. Over here, we've got the Scorpios Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. And it has two action buttons on its back. The first operates the jaw with the sound effects. And the second button on its back activates the claws for a slashing action. That is pretty cool and it is quite a large figure and it is the next in size. For our next one, let's grab this classic Endoraptor figure. This is the grab and growl Endoraptor, and it is pretty hard to find online nowadays. I don't think they're making this one anymore. It's got one button on the top of its tail for the claw slashing action, and another button on the bottom of its tail for a jaw chomping action. 
All right, this figure is pretty awesome. So let's set this next in line as the next biggest. Over here, I've got another Carnotaurus figure, but this one is quite a bit older. I think this one came out for the second Jurassic World movie, which was Fallen Kingdom. As you can see, they're a slightly different red color, and this figure is a little bit smaller than that one as well. But it still has one button on its back for the chomping action. Very cool. All right, let's set this down. This next figure is really long, but it's actually a little bit shorter than the Carnotaurus figure, which is why it's next in line. This, I believe, was called the Ocean Protector Mosasaurus figure. You can move all of its fins and its jaw opens and closes too. All right, let's keep going. Let's go with this Jurassic Park juvenile T-Rex figure. This figure is quite old. You can see the JP tattoo on its leg. It's got some battle damage on its side as well. Let's set this one down next in line. For the next figure, why don't we go with another old figure? This is from Jurassic Park 3. And I believe this dinosaur is a Velociraptor. And it used to be battery operated, but sadly it doesn't work anymore. But it's still a really cool figure. So let's set this down next to the T-Rex. Up next for scary carnivores, we've got a Suchomimus figure. This version is the dark blue with the yellow spine, and it has one button on its back for the chomping action. And let's set this down next in line right here. For the next in size, let's see, I think we should go with the sound surge dinosaurs. This first one is the Giganotosaurus sound surge. Let's check out those sound effects. Very cool, let's set this down next to the Suchomimus. The other Sound Surge dinosaur in this carnivore collection is the Sound Surge Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now let's hear the sound effects for this figure. And we're gonna set it down right next to the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus. Next up is this Rowdy Roars Carnotaurus figure. It is the classic clay red and orange coloring with the brown on top. It's got a little battle damage on its nose too. Compared to the epic attack figure, this one is a whole lot smaller and is a little bit brighter and of course has much larger eyes. All right, let's set this down next to the T-Rex. The next in size is this Cryolophosaurus figure. This version has the dark blue body with the white and orange on the top. And this figure comes with sound effects and when you move the tail, it controls the head. All right, let's set this down next to the Carnotaurus. Up next, we've got a Baryonyx figure. I think this one might be a Camp Cretaceous Baryonyx. And it's got these slide lever action on its back for different roars and sound effects. So let's set this up next in line. I've also got a custom Hammond Collection Spinosaurus figure. It has the red running along its back and on its face, and it's got the blue, brown, and red spine, which is actually pretty similar to this other custom colored Spinosaurus figure that I have in the front. So we're gonna set this one down next in line. Over here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It's got pretty similar coloring as this Camp Cretaceous Baryonyx figure right here. It's even got a little bit of that reflective blue coloring on its face. And let's set this one down right at the very end right here. Next up is not a dinosaur, but is actually an Owen figure from Jurassic World. This figure has the classic brown vest with the blue shirt underneath. And we're running out of room at the end of the table, so I'm gonna start a new line right up here in front. For the next in size is this Dilophosaurus figure. I believe this Dilophosaurus came out for the first Jurassic World movie and is not made by Mattel, but actually I think it's made by Hasbro. And it even has an action that when you press down on its tail, it moves its neck up and down. Let's go ahead and grab this little Velociraptor blue figure. Now this figure is actually motorized, so when you press the top of its head, it comes with sound effects and chomping motions. And now we finally get to open this other new figure. This is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure. Now it looks like this Dilophosaurus figure has one button on its side and it looks like it is for the sound effects and light. And I think it actually comes with a few different sound effects too. Let's press it again. 
That's pretty cool. It's like a strobing light when you press it. It looks like its legs and arms are poseable, and you can open and close its mouth manually, but sadly, you can't move the frills at all, so you can't bring them forward, which is a bit of a bummer if you ask me, but it is a pretty cool design. So let's set this Dilophosaurus down next to Velociraptor Blue. All right, we've only got a few small figures left. I've got two Atrociraptor figures right here. This first Atrociraptor is in the classic white and tan coloring. And this other Atrociraptor figure that I bought more recently is brighter colored. It's got some red on its arms, its neck, and its chin. And we're gonna set these two up next in line. Over here, I've got another Dilophosaurus figure quite a bit smaller. They're both green and they have some yellow, orange, and red detailing along their frills. But this figure is actually pretty cool because you can press on the tail to activate its frills. That is really cool. Up next is another Velociraptor figure, but this is a slashing Velociraptor. That means that its torso is actually spring-loaded so you can swing it side to side for a slashing action. And let's put this one right here. I've got another raptor over here. This one is a pyroraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the feathers all over its body and the especially large feathers on the top of its head. And let's set this raptor down next in line. And now we're on to the really small figures over here. First up is a baryonyx with the dark brown and blue coloring. And you can open and close its jaw too. Next up is a stalking endoraptor figure with the gold stripe running down its side. Up next is a teeny tiny Mosasaurus figure. Look how small it is in comparison to this giant figure right there. But you can still open and close its mouth, which is pretty cool. And finally, I've got a tiny Pteranodon figure with some brown detailing on its wings, on its back, and on its horn. Amazing Dinosaurs is a T-Rex versus T-Rex collection. And we're gonna be facing them off against each other, right side versus the left side. And as an extra bonus, I've got a new custom colored T-Rex that I just ordered that we'll be checking out in a little bit. Let's get started with the biggest T-Rex figures. This one is a custom colored super colossal T-Rex. This is one of my most brightly colored T-Rexes. This one is super cool and will be the first on the right side. Over here, we've got another super colossal T-Rex. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It has the bright orange sides with the brown on top and the lighter underbelly. So let's place this on the left side over here. Going back to the right side, let's grab this super colossal Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. This version of the super colossal T-Rex features some of the darkest coloring that any of my T-Rex figures have. And let's put this one on the right side. And for our final super colossal T-Rex is another custom colored one. This one is a light blue gray color all over and has some bright red eyes. I think this figure actually used to be the same color as this one right here. So let's put this figure on the left side to face off. There are our super colossal figures. Now let's move on to the rest of the smaller figures. This T-Rex is the Terran T-Rex. It has a button on its back that you can use for a really cool tearing action. It swings its entire neck around and closes its mouth. And not only that, but it also has a button to swing its tail back and forth too. All right, what team should we put this one on? Let's put it on the right side team. Up next is the Hammond Collection T-Rex. This figure came out pretty recently. It features much more detailed coloring and texturing, plus you can move its body in all sorts of different directions. Now let's put this Hammond Collection T-Rex on the left team. Here is the Epic Roarin' T-Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. This figure is one of my favorite T-Rexes because of its realistic coloring, and it actually has a roar sound effects with vibration. That is battery operated, that's pretty cool. 
And we're going to place this one on the right team. For the left team, we're going to go with the smaller Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. You can see that compared to the super colossal version, it's actually quite similar with the black on top and the dark brown on the sides and the yellow eyes, but obviously just a whole lot smaller. And we're going to place this one actually on the left team. This T-Rex is another custom colored Tyrannosaurus Rex figure from Jurassic World. And this one features some really cool camouflage coloring all over its body. And you can even move the tail for a jaw snapping action and for a roaring action too. Now let's put this on the right team for the face off. Now back to our bin, what one should we grab next? Let's go for this bright orange one. This looks to be like a battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has some painted slashes on its neck and on its chin, as well as on its leg and its torso. And this seems to be a little bit smaller than a lot of these figures. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on the left team. Wow, look at that size difference between this one and the Hammond Collection T-Rex. For the right side, we're gonna go with this other battle damage T-Rex, but instead of painted battle damage, it actually has an activated battle damage slash right there that you can turn on and off. It's also interesting that this figure is a much darker orange than that battle damage T-Rex. And we're gonna put this one on the right team. Next up, we've got a larger T-Rex figure. This is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. And this T-Rex figure actually came with this cage that you put on its face. And once it's on there, you can actually break free from it. That is really cool. And it's probably one of my favorite features. And we're gonna place this T-Rex on the left team. Right over here is another super brightly custom colored T-Rex figure. This T-Rex is another fiery red color and it actually has very similar design to this super colossal T-Rex right over here. You can see all those similarities. And now we're actually gonna place them on the same team on the right side. <laughs> All right, the time has come. We are gonna check out this new custom colored T-Rex that I ordered, and I actually haven't seen it yet. You can see the tip of the tail right there, so let's go ahead and pull it out. And here it is. All right, it is another custom colored camouflage T-Rex. That is super cool. It's got the bright green on the sides and then brown and black and tan all over the rest of its body. And this one looks to be actually a battle damage T-Rex like this bright orange one right over here. And look at that, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off still. And actually this figure seems to be pretty similar in color to this older custom colored camouflage T-Rex. Look at that, they're pretty similar. They both have a lot of the same colors. This is really cool. And instead of having them on the same team, I'm actually gonna put this one on the left team over here so they can face off against each other. Our next figure in this T-Rex versus T-Rex collection is this dark green T-Rex. And this one was actually not custom colored. This is how it came. And comparing the two colors, the custom colored green is a lot brighter than this green. And this T-Rex still has the button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now let's put this T-Rex on the right team. Let's keep going here. Let's grab this one next. Here is another very natural colored T-Rex. Looks like it's a light gray color on the sides and dark brown on the top. I bet that this T-Rex would blend into rocks or a mountainside really well. Its body is fully posable and it has the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. And this T-Rex is gonna go over on the left team. I've got at least one more bright orange T-Rex figure. This figure is a little bit older. I think it might be from the Fallen Kingdom era. And like that super colossal figure in the back there, it has the bright orange body with the brown on top and it features the chomping button. Let's move it on over to the right team. Here's another crazy looking custom colored T-Rex. And this figure is actually quite old. I believe it's from the first Jurassic World movie. I believe that this figure used to be a tan color, actually just like this figure right here. These two figures are basically identical other than the coloring, of course. And they both got a button on the top of their back for a chomping action, although they don't work too well anymore. Now let's put them on opposing sides. The custom colored T-Rex is gonna go on the left team and the original tan T-Rex is gonna go on the right team. 
I've actually got one more T-Rex figure from that same era. This figure is basically the exact same size, although it has different coloring, and this is actually how it came too. So it has the dark green on the body, but it has some reflective gold along the top, and then this interesting design running along its neck and its side too. But coolest of all, it actually has some hidden spikes on its back and its head, so that when you press the chomping action, its spikes spring out too. Now what side should this T-Rex go on? Let's say, let's have it go on the right team. Coming up next, we've got a smaller T-Rex figure, and this is actually a model T-Rex that wasn't made by Hasbro or Mattel. It features some brown coloring with the black stripes, and since it's a model, you can't actually move any body parts. And let's put this figure on the left team. <laughs> this next figure is another model T-Rex, and it has some kind of tiger-like coloring with the orange-yellow body and then those black stripes right on top of that. Let's put this T-Rex model on the right team. Got a few more model T-Rexes in here. This one is a dark green with black striping, and on this model T-Rex, you can actually open and close its jaws. Now let's put this one on the left team right there. And here is one more model T-Rex figure. This one is also brown and black, pretty similar to this T-Rex right here, but it is quite a bit smaller. And on this figure, you can actually open and close its jaw too. Now let's have it go on the right team. Next, let's check out some Lego T-Rex figures. This first one is brown and bright orange. It features a fully posable body and a huge jaw. And this one's gonna go to the left team. Now let's grab that other Lego T-Rex figure that I have in here. This one is a lot darker brown. You can check out the color difference between the two right there. But in shape and size, they're pretty similar. Although I will point out that this one has white teeth and the teeth on this figure are not colored at all. But nevertheless, let's set this one on the right team. And we're back to the figures made by Mattel. This is the Sound Surge Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It's smaller than many of these other figures in here, but it has a button on the top of its back to activate the sound effects. Let's see if we have any more room for this T-Rex here. Now here's a wacky looking T-Rex figure. This is a Gujitsu Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it is actually licensed by Jurassic World, so this is an official figure. And the feature of this figure is that it's got a super squishy and super stretchy body. Check out this crazy stretching. All right, now I don't know that this figure is actually gonna stand up, but we're gonna place it on the left team here. I've also got a Funko Pop figure in here. This one is from Jurassic World Dominion. And I really like the all black eyes on this figure. Makes it look really scary. And we're gonna place this on the right team. Right here are some older figures. I believe once again from the first Jurassic World movie. This super bright one is actually a hybrid T-Rex. It is a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus. And it's got the bright neon orange and the reflective gold coloring on its body. So this one is pretty special. So let's Let's place that on the left team right here and check out this other one that is very similar sized but not a hybrid T-Rex. So this is the original version and it's got a little bit of battle damage right on the side. And let's place this right in front of the hybrid T-Rex on the right team. And finally, I've got some tiny T-Rex figures in here. Let's check all of these out. Looks like there's a couple of Snap Squad figures in here. This first Snap Squad T-Rex is in the brown orange coloring with the dark brown on the top and let's place this on the right side and then there's also this dark green snap squad t-rex and i think this t-rex figure is actually pretty similar in color and design as this one way back there look at that they're basically the same green color now let's put this one on the left side here and for our final two we've got this crazy looking t-rex figure this one's qu also quite a bit old so the chomping action doesn't work anymore sadly but we'll go ahead and put it on the right team and then finally this miniature tyrannosaurus rex figure it is all brown although its eyes look to be painted black which is a nice detail and the underbelly is also painted a lighter tan color and let's finally put this t-rex on the left team and so here is our entire versus battle we've got the left team of t-rexes over here versus the right team which side do you think would win in a battle? Let me know in the comments below.
Today, we're gonna be taking all of my Jurassic World Dominion figures and we're gonna be putting them from biggest over here all the way to smallest down here. This figure right here is the largest Dominion figure that I have. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure and it is super long. It's probably three or four feet in length, but it still has some really cool features. You can even open and close the mouth and twist the head around too. So let's put this dinosaur on the very far left as the biggest dinosaur. Let's see, what super colossal figure is next? It's a tough call, but I think the Giganotosaurus might be the next largest. This figure is huge, has a classic green coloring, the awesome super sharp spine, and the really cool teeth. These are pretty unique. Let's set this super colossal Giganotosaurus down right next to the Dreadnoughtus figure. These are our two largest figures. Next up has got to be our super colossal T-Rex with the new brown and black coloring. You won't see this on older Jurassic World figurines. This one is super cool. Let's put this right next to our giant Giganotosaurus figure. Next is this awesome Atrociraptor figure. This one is the white with two different tones of brown striping along its back and sides. And unlike the other super colossal figures we've seen so far, the teeth are actually fully inside the mouth compared to the other figures we've seen so far where the teeth are on kind of like the outside of the mouth. All right, there we go. Let's move on to the next biggest, which is this tall Brachiosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. Let me stand it up. Now this dinosaur is a lot taller than these other dinosaurs right here, but its body is a bit smaller and it's just shorter in size overall. So that's why I'm putting it over here. But it's got some pretty cool detailing, the blue coloring around its head. And next up in size is this giant Apatosaurus figure. Check out the size difference between this one and the Brachiosaurus over here. It's a little bit shorter, it's still standing on all four legs and it has a really long neck but instead of going up super tall like that one, this one kind of sticks out forward this more. All right, now we're moving on to our slightly smaller figurines. We're gonna start with this T-Rex, which has the identical coloring as the super colossal figure right over there. This is a really cool T-Rex. I like the features on this one, and this one has a ginormous head compared to older Jurassic World T-Rexes. Right over here, we've got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This one has some really cool orange brown coloring. It has a lot more detail than many of the other Jurassic World T-Rexes. It even has marbled eyes. Check out all that texture. And these figures are super poseable too, which is an awesome feature. Next, we've got this thrashing Giganotosaurus figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure over here. They look pretty similar. This one's quite a bit smaller, although it's still probably around a foot in length from tail to head. So let's set this down right next to the T-Rex figure. All right, what do we go with next here? I think next is this Allosaurus figure. This figure is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex's and the Giganotosaurus figure here, but it is a lot larger than a lot of my other Allosaurus figures. Plus it has a battle damage feature right on its side that you can open and close. Let's get this standing right next to the Giganotosaurus. The next up in size is the Therizinosaurus figurine, which was really cool in the Dominion movie. So we're gonna set this down right next to the Allosaurus figure and check out those huge claws on its hand and the really long neck with the big face at the very top. We've got another herbivore dinosaur next in size here. This is the Stegosaurus with some pretty cool coloring. It's got the brown, some lighter tan, green, and then the clay red at the very top. <laughs> All right, let's set it down next to the Therizinosaurus. Look at those spikes. They're a little bit taller than the Therizinosaurus, although if this was standing up all the way, it would definitely be a lot taller. Here is the Yang Chuanosaurus figure. This, I don't think was in the new Jurassic World Dominion movie, but it came out as part of the toy line. It's got some really cool coloring. It's got an action that lets you move the neck around in a lifelike way. And you know what? I think it is actually a little bit bigger than the Stegosaurus. So let's shift the Stegosaurus over and put this dinosaur right there. Next is a really interesting looking dinosaur. This is the Ampelosaurus. Got the clay red coloring with the brown top, a super long neck, and it stands on four legs. Let's put this right next to the Stegosaurus figure. 
Hmm, I can't quite tell which one is the next largest, but I'm gonna go with the Rajasaurus figure in the blue and gray coloring. And it's got that cool little spike right at the top of its head. Now let's set it right next to the Ampelosaurus. Let's see if it stands up. I think its legs are kind of broken. So that'll have to do. Here is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus figure. Once again, it has pretty similar coloring as the super colossal figure right here. And this one comes with sound effects as well. It's pretty cool. So let's set this right next to the Rajasaurus figure. The next in size, I think, is this Pyroraptor figurine. This is the basic edition, but it still has the cool fiery red coloring and the black on its tail, on its legs, and a little bit on its head too. Let's set them down right here. <laughs> and very close in size to the Pyroraptor is this basic Atrociraptor figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure that we have back here. So let's go down all the way to the end and set them on the table. All right, now the figures are getting a little bit smaller. I think next up is the Mega Raptor figure in the bright red and blue and a little bit of tan right along its face. And this figure is cool because it actually has an action when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action. Here is, I believe it's pronounced the Dryptosaurus. And a cool new feature that Mattel is putting on these toys is this little slide. It's like a thing that swings back and forth and it actually swings their head back and forth and opens their mouth too, which is pretty cool. Now let's set it down right next to the Mega Raptor. Next is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. This one comes in the gray, dark blue with the yellow striping. And like all the Hammond Collection figures, is super poseable and really cool. Let's put this down right at the end. Here we've got another Hammond Collection figurine. This is the Parasaurolophus. It's got some pretty bright coloring and of course is super poseable and adjustable as well. <laughs> Next is the bright Ichthyovenator. It looks kind of like a Spinosaurus because it has the big spine on its back and a long and narrow snout, but it has a super bright and much larger tail and is a lot smaller than a Spinosaurus, I think. So let's go ahead and put this down right next to the Parasaurolophus. Here we've got a huge Cynoceratops figurine with some bright yellow coloring around its all black eyes and the yellow coloring right on its tail as well. And like many of these other figures, it has the action that when you press down on its back, it lifts up its head. Let's see, next up in size is this Triceratops figure in the green and brown coloring. Let's put this at the very end. Oh, you know what? It looks like we're out of space at the very end though. So let's create a new row in the front, right up here. We've got another Triceratops figure next, but this one is from the Hammond collection. So compared to this other Triceratops figure right here, you can see that this one has a lot more detailing and differencing in the color, because this one basically has two different colors. This one kind of fades into all sorts of other different colors. And of course, is a lot more poseable as well. Next up is the Iguanodon figurine in the tan and darker brown on top with the striping. Let's set down this Iguanodon right next to the Triceratops. Now we're down to the really small ones. So let's start with this brand new one that I bought. This is the Geniodectes Cirrus Dinosaur. All right, this dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. It's got a dark gray body, but then it has this super bright coloring along its leg, its neck, its face, and the super bright red on top. And this is the Extreme Battle Damage Edition, so you can click it open and closed with that button on the top. All right, let's put this Geniodectes down right next to the Iguanodon. We've got a few more extreme battle damage dinosaurs right here that are the same size. This first one is a Velociraptor and I've also got an Atrociraptor figure. And they both have that button on the top that activates the battle damage on both sides of its body. Let's set these down next in line. I've got a couple more Atrociraptor figures right here. These are the non-battle damage versions. I've got an orange one with the tan striping and then of course the white with brown striping, just like the giant super colossal version. Let's get this first Atrociraptor down 
in a second. Here is another Pyroraptor. This is a pretty small figure, and this one actually has the extreme battle damage on the side as well. Check that out, it's pretty cool. It's got the same classic red and black coloring along its body. And let's set it down right next to the white Atrociraptor. This next figure, I believe, is called the Moros Intrepidus. It's got some pretty unique green and orange coloring. It's got the light green eyes, some pretty cool feathering and detailing all over its body. And let's set it down as the next smallest dinosaur. All right, now we're getting down to the real small dinosaurs. These are both Dimetrodons, and their spines make them look really tall, but actually their bodies are really short. This first brown Dimetrodon is a normal one, doesn't have any special features, so we'll put that next in line. But this other Dimetrodon actually has battle damage on the side, like many of these other small figures, which is pretty cool. So let's set that down right there. And here are our last two dinosaurs. We've got a Miragaya dinosaur with the huge spikes on the side, and we've also got a Therizinosaurus figure, which is really small, but still has the giant claws and the classic coloring. All right, let's set these down. Looks like we have just enough space. I'm showing you my quadrupedal dinosaur collection, which means dinosaurs with four feet, and I'm gonna be ranking them from the biggest all the way to the smallest. Let's get started with the largest quadrupedal that I have, which is this huge Dreadnoughtus figure. This dinosaur has the blue with the tan striping, and it has one of the longest necks out of any of my figures. So let's set this figure on the very left because this is my largest dinosaur. Next up in size is one of these Brachiosaurus figures. Let's first choose this one right here. It's got the classic brown coloring and you can move its legs, its neck, and you can even open and close its mouth. Let's move this Brachiosaurus right next to the Dreadnoughtus. Check out that size difference between these two. Next up, we've got another Brachiosaurus figure, but this one is newer. This one is part of the Jurassic World Dominion collection. Now its body shape is pretty much the same as this one right here, but you'll notice that it has some different coloring and the best part of all is that it has this reflective blue coloring along its face. Next up in size, we've got this huge Apatosaurus figure. This dinosaur is quite a bit smaller than the Brachiosaurus figures, but it's still quite large. It has the green with the light green striping, and I'm sure you recognize this dinosaur from the Jurassic World Dominion movie. Let's keep going. I think the next biggest in size is this Amargosaurus figure. I think this figure's pretty old and that they don't make it anymore, but it's really cool because it has these two huge spines running down its neck and two action buttons, one to move the neck up and down and one to swing the tail back and forth. All right, let's set this down right next to the Apatosaurus. Wow, look at that size difference. Next up in size, let's go with the Jurassic World Dominion Ampelosaurus figure. This figure features the clay red and brown coloring. It's got tons of spikes all over its body, and it has the tail that controls the head and the chomping action too. Let's set the Amplosaurus down next in line. Oh, those are pretty close in size. Next up, let's go with the Pentaceratops figure. This dinosaur has one of the largest frills that I've seen out of any dinosaur. Plus, it's got horns all along its frill and on its face too. And it has two action buttons, one to move the head up and down, and one to move the torso side to side. All right, let's set this down next to the Ampelosaurus. Next up in size, I think we gotta go with the Stegosaurus figures here. This first one has brown, it's got green, it's got the clay red coloring, and like all the other Stegosaurus figures, it has a tail swinging attack button. Let's set down this first Stegosaurus next to the Pentaceratops. And I think all these Stegosauruses are gonna be pretty similar in size, so let's just go with this one next 
It's got the blue gray coloring with the darker coloring along the top and the pink underbelly. And of course, the swinging tail attack. Let's get this Stegosaurus down next in line. This next one is brighter in color. It's almost a teal green color. It's still got a lighter underbelly and it has some cool highlights right along its spine. This one will be our third Stegosaurus in line. And our fourth and final Stegosaurus of this collection is this gigantic Trackers Stegosaurus. And this is actually a very new figure. It's got some really cool coloring all over its body. Plus it comes with this crazy looking Dino Tracker backpack. Let's set it down as our fourth Stegosaurus. Next in size I think is this Diabloceratops figure. Check out these super huge horns on the top of its head and on the front of its face too. It's got a fiery red color over most of its body and the light tan underbelly. Plus there's an action button to swing its head back and forth. Let's put this down next in size. Up next, let's go with this Sinoceratops in the light gray blue with the tan detailing. And check out those super dark black eyes. That's pretty crazy looking. Let's put this one down next in line and you can use the tail to move ahead too. I've got another Sinoceratops figure right here that is probably the exact same in size but it's got different coloring. This one is the green with the tan detailing, and this one has some bright yellow eyes. So let's set this one down too, and look at that. This one also controls the head by moving the tail. It looks like we've got a few Triceratops figures up next. This first one has the dark brown with the two tones of blue along its back. And just like these Sinoceratops figures, you can use the tail to control the head. Let's go ahead and grab this next Triceratops figure with the gray and darker gray detailing along the top. But with this figure, instead of the tail that controls the head, there are two action buttons on its back. One controls the head for roaring and the other controls its tail for swinging back and forth. Now let's set this down next in line as the second Triceratops. And this next Triceratops has some green coloring with brown along its frill and along its back too. And this Triceratops has an even different action. When you press down on its body, it does a roar and it has sound effects too. Oh, you know what? I think there's another Triceratops here that I didn't even notice. This one has the clay red coloring with the brown detailing along the top and on the frill. And this one has one single action button on its back for the roaring action. This next quadrupedal dinosaur is a Kentrosaurus. It's got the spines running all along its back and these ginormous spikes coming right out of its sides. And this one has a pretty cool action that when you slide this back, it swings its torso back and forth to stab with those huge spikes. Now this dinosaur might be a little taller with its spines compared to the Triceratops, but we're gonna place it right here anyways. For the next up in size, we're gonna go with this dinosaur. This is the Edmontosaurus. Its front legs are smaller compared to its back legs. It's got some pretty cool coloring on its face and on that crown on the top of its head. And like many of these other cool figures that we've seen, you can use the tail to control the head. And it has sound effects too. Next, we're gonna go with this Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's mostly tan, it's got some brown striping with the lighter streaks on the top. And with this figure, when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action. All right, next, let's go with this crazy looking dinosaur. This is a Sarcosuchus. It's got a long and narrow snout with tons of teeth. And the coolest part is that you can use the tail to control the head. The next dinosaur that we're gonna choose is this Ankylosaurus figure right here. This one is clay red, it's got some brown, and its spikes are a lighter color. And I think this one was from Jurassic World Dominion because when you press down on its back, it swings its tail back and forth. Let's go ahead and grab this next Ankylosaurus for our next in size. This one is a really old figure from Jurassic World. I think this one is from the first movie. And check out the size difference between the two. Next up, we've got two baby Brachiosaurus figures right here. And they each have their own unique color. This first one's gray, it's got some dark brown purple coloring along the top. And this other one is a much brighter color. It's a bright green with dark green right along the top. So let's set these down right next to the Ankylosauruses. 
Next in size, let's see, I think it might be this dinosaur, which I believe is called a Styracosaurus. It's got some super bright coloring along the front of its frill, which is really interesting, and it has some darker detailing along its back. Now let's set this down right next to the baby Brachiosauruses. I think next we're gonna go with this Miragaya figure from Jurassic World Dominion. Like the Kentrosaurus, this one also has some huge spikes sticking right out of its sides. Now let's set it down right next to the Styracosaurus. Next, why don't we go with this dinosaur? This is the Chialingosaurus. It looks somewhat similar to a Stegosaurus because it's got those spines in the top, but the spikes in the very back are quite a bit different, and it has these tiny little spikes coming out of its front legs. And let's set this one down next in line. Next, let's go with this crazy looking dinosaur. This is the Shringosaurus, and it's got a huge and very long neck. It's got those two evil looking horns on the top of its head too. Very wild looking. Let's put this next in line. For the next in size, why don't we go with this one? This is a Calavasaurus. It's got a dark blue body with some orange detailing. It's got some light blue stripes along its tail and on its mouth as well. And it looks like we're running out of space at the edge of the table. So we're gonna start a new line right in front. For our next in size, let's go with this baby Triceratops figure with extreme battle damage right on the side. And let's put this one down right next to the Calavasaurus. This next dinosaur I believe is called a Zunoceratops. It's got a pretty bright body and it's got two horns on the front of its head. So let's set this down right next to the baby Triceratops. They look pretty similar. For our next one, why don't we go with this baby Stegosaurus figure. And you may notice that this baby Stegosaurus came as part of a set with this huge Stegosaurus right here. You can see that they're very similar in color. So let's set this down next in size, next to the Zunoceratops. And next we'll go with these two Dimetrodon figures. This first one is the older figure of the two, and this figure has an action that when you move its tail, it chomps its jaw open and closed. So we're gonna put that right there. And this other Dimetrodon figure is from Jurassic World Dominion, so it's pretty new. And it's got a much brighter spine, although it does not have any action buttons. So we're gonna set it down right next to the other one. Next up, it looks like we've got a Sauropelta figure. This is a pretty small figure, but it has some huge spikes on its back in comparison. It's really cool. So let's set this one down next in line. Here we have a small dinosaur. This is a Musasaurus. It's got blue with some black detailing along the top and the yellow underbelly. And we'll set this down right here. And finally, we have two Minmi figures. This first one right over here is mostly green in color. Its spikes are more of a yellow color, but it has a ton of spikes along its back for protection. And this second Minmi figure right here is red in color and its spikes are a bright white in contrast. But other than that, it is pretty identical to the other Minmi figure. collection of Predator vs. Predator figures from Jurassic World, and we're going to be comparing all of them against each other. The first two figures to face off in this collection is this Spinosaurus and this Battle Damage T-Rex. Let's check out the Spinosaurus first. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, so this one's actually pretty hard to find nowadays. It's got the huge front arms. It's got a long and narrow snout with a lot of teeth. And this figure is quite a bit larger than its opponent, the Battle Damage T-Rex. This figure is a bright orange color. It's got Battle Damage slashes painted all over its body, even right on its face and on its chin. Now this T-Rex has tiny arms compared to the Spinosaurus, but it's still got the same jaw chomping action. Next up for the verses is this T-Rex versus this Allosaurus figure. Let's start with the T-Rex. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Battle Damage T-Rex. It's got a darker orange body than the T-Rex that we just saw. And you can turn the battle damage on and off with the click of a button. And overall it has some pretty cool detailing and darker shading. Now let's see what's different about this huge Allosaurus figure, also from Jurassic World Dominion. Now this figure also has battle damage on the side, but you can even open it up and move the ribs to show the stomach underneath. Now this Allosaurus is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it still has an awesome button for jaw chomping and sound effects. 
Up next for our predator competition is this Jurassic Park Utah Raptor versus this new Dino Trackers Endoraptor. Let's first check out this Endoraptor. It is super reflective. It's a dark blue color. I think it might be just around the same size as the Utah Raptor, but it's got some really cool actions. First, you can move its arms for some sound effects and a jaw chomping action. And it's also got a button on its back for more jaw chomping action. Now let's see how this super old Utah Raptor holds up. You can see that little Jurassic Park tattoo on its leg right there. Now this figure used to be battery operated, but unfortunately since it's so old, it doesn't work anymore. Like many of the vintage Jurassic Park figures, it has a soft rubbery skin, and it still has a chomping action when you press down on its tail. Next, let's go with a Carnotaurus versus an Albertosaurus. The Albertosaurus is a little bit smaller than the Carnotaurus, and it has much brighter coloring. It's got the orange stripe running down its side and the green body, and the tail twists back and forth to control the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's check out this bigger Carnotaurus figure. This figure is dark brown with a gray underbelly. It's got even smaller arms than a T-Rex does. And you'll notice that the Albertosaurus arms are a little bit bigger. And just like the Albertosaurus, the tail swivels back and forth to move the head and for a jaw chomping action. For our next verses, let's grab this other Carnotaurus figure versus this Suchomimus. Let's start with the Carnotaurus. This figure is a bit smaller than the darker Carnotaurus that we just saw. The coloring overall is a lot more simplistic. There's not anywhere near as much shading. There's a little bit of white underneath its chin and some dark coloring on its neck and the top of its head. And the actions are a bit more simplistic too. There is one button at the top of its back for some sound effects. Let's compare that to this bright yellow Suchomimus figure. This Jurassic World figure stands a little bit taller than the Carnotaurus figure. It's got a huge spine that runs all the way from the head down to the tail. And just like the Spinosaurus, it has a long and narrow snout with a bunch of teeth on the inside. And this figure has two actions. The first is a jaw chomping action, and the second is a tail swinging action. Our next two predators are this huge Scorpios Rex figure and this even larger T-Rex figure. Let's start with the T-Rex figure. It's got a light brown body with the darker coloring along the top and you can move all its limbs and it has the single button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now the Scorpios Rex has a few more features. First off, I love the detailing on this figure. There's some bumps. You can see this huge ridge running down its back. It's got these tiny little spikes on its elbows. And of course, it's got the poisonous quills on the end of its tail. And it still has two action buttons. The first moves its jaw and check out those super awesome teeth. And the second button moves its arms for slashing. Our next two predators are first a Carcharodontosaurus versus a Cryolophosaurus. The Carcharodontosaurus is definitely a little bit bigger, but the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow than the Carcharodontosaurus. Comparing the size, the Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit bigger and the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow color. It's got movable limbs and you can use the tail to swing the head around. And the Carcharodontosaurus, though it's not as bright, it still has some bright orange running down its back and on its neck. And instead of the tail as the action button on this figure, there's a button on its back for a chomping action. <laughs> right here, we've got a Metriacanthosaurus versus an Allosaurus figure from Jurassic Park. Let's check out this vintage figure first. Now this Allosaurus looks quite a bit different from the new Jurassic World figures. It's got a different head shape and a slightly different body. But the cool thing about this figure is that there's multiple battle damage parts that you can take off of its body. Check that out and even on its tail too. Look at all that battle damage. That is super cool. Now let's compare that with the Metriacanthosaurus. I believe this is from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom era. It's pretty bright in color and it's around the same size as the Allosaurus figure. And this one doesn't have any battle damage, but it does have an action button on its back to control the jaw. <laughs> Before we continue on with the rest of the bin, let's actually open up this new Hammond Collection Concavenator. All right, now I think I only have one other Concavenator figure in my entire collection. 
so I'm super happy to add this one. It looks like it has quite a few different colors on its body. It's mainly got this blue, and there's some bright orange, brown, light tan, and then a very dark red right around its eyes. And since it's a Hammond Collection figure, it doesn't have any action buttons, but its body is super poseable. You can bend it at all of its limbs and joints. And its neck and head is especially poseable, which I really like. All in all, I think this figure stands up to the quality of all of the other Hammond Collection figures. Next up for our Predator versus Predator, we've got another Carnotaurus versus an Allosaurus. The Carnotaurus figure is quite a bit larger than the Allosaurus, so let's check this one out first. Now this figure has a bright orange body with the gray underbelly. It's got the tiny little front arms, just like the figure we saw earlier. And it also has the tail that you can move back and forth to move the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's see what's different about this Allosaurus figure. I think this one is even brighter in color. It's got the yellow and two tones of blue. It's got bigger front arms than the Carnotaurus figure. It's also got a tiny little row of spines running down its back to its tail. And this figure has two action buttons. The first operates the jaw and the second moves the arms up and down. The next two predators are this Dilophosaurus versus the Scorpio Venator. These figures are around the same size, but you'll see that the Dilophosaurus is a little bit longer. Now this Dilophosaurus is the basic edition, so there is no action button. You can move the limbs a little bit and you can activate the frills, but sadly that's pretty much it. Let's see how that compares against the Scorpio Venator. This figure is pretty brightly colored as well and you can move all of the limbs, but this figure does have an action button. When you press down on its back, it activates the chomping action. Check out those sound effects too. Next, we've got the Seatz Mikurarum versus the Irritator. Between these two, the Seatz Mikurarum is definitely the larger dinosaur. It's got tons of spikes on its head, running all the way down to its back. And like many of the other figures we've seen so far, you can move the tail back and forth to move its head and chomp its jaw. Now let's check out its competitor, this Irritator. Although it's a little bit smaller, it still has some really cool coloring with the two tones of blue on the top. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around as well. Although, you have to open and close the mouth manually. Let's keep on going. For our next verses, we've got a Ceratosaurus versus an Endoraptor. And see how much longer the Endoraptor is compared to the Ceratosaurus. This Endoraptor is the basic edition, so once again, there are no action buttons that you can press, but you can still move its arms, legs, and its tail. And it's still got some awesome spikes on its body. Let's see how the Ceratosaurus is different. It's got a dark green body with some black detailing on the top. This dinosaur seems a lot more bulkier in size. And of course, it's got an action at the top of its back for roaring and sound effects. This is the Baryonyx versus the Amber Collection Raptor. I think the Baryonyx is a little bit bigger, but this Raptor is so much more brighter. Because this figure is from the Amber Collection, there's a lot more attention to the coloring and the limbs can be posed in many more different ways too. This figure is perfect for posing on a display show. Now let's check out its competitor, the Baryonyx. Because this figure isn't from the Amber Collection, there's not as much that you can pose on its body. But the cool part about this figure is that it has an action button on its back. Check out that chomping action. Now let's compare two very different dinosaurs. This is a Pteranodon versus an Allosaurus. This Pteranodon figure has foldable wings that you can open up and it's probably a foot in length from wingtip to wingtip. And it's got a button on its back to flap the wings too. Plus, you can open and close its mouth manually. Now let's see this Allosaurus figure. This one is pretty simplistic in color. It has the gray on the sides and then the yellow detailing all along the top. Of course, it's got the iconic ridge right above its eye. And on this figure, there's one single action button for the jaw. These next two figures are smaller. I believe this one is called an Elephrosaurus versus, if I remember correctly, the Rugops Primus figure. The Elephrosaurus has a long and narrow snout and is mostly tan, it's got some brown as well. But this other figure, it's got darker coloring as well. And you can move its tiny little arms and open and close its mouth. 
Up next, we've got two different raptor species. This first one is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion, and this other one is, I believe, an Amber Collection Velociraptor. Just like many of the other Amber Collection figures, it is a lot more poseable than many of the normal figures. And they did a pretty decent job with its coloring as well. And the pyroraptor has some decent detailing. You can check out all those feather designs right there. And the coolest part, I think, about the pyroraptor are these huge feathers right at the top of its head. And next, we've got a Jurassic World miniature T-Rex figure versus a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Both these figures are pretty old, but this Velociraptor is the oldest. It's got a spring-loaded chomping action, and it features some pretty unique coloring that I don't think I have another Velociraptor that's colored like this. Now let's check out this other miniature T-Rex figure. This specific figure comes from an older line from Jurassic World. I think it was actually made by Hasbro. So it's got some battle damage right there on the side. And on this figure, you can move the tail back and forth and side to side to operate the jaw and the head. This is a collection of 100 Jurassic World figures and I'm gonna be showing you all of them today. Let's get started with this giant Spinosaurus figure. This specific figure is actually from the Legacy Collection and they don't make this one anymore. So it's pretty hard to find. It's got the dark green color ring different than all the other Spinosaurus figures, and of course the jaw chomping button. Next we've got a big Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got a light brown body, its arms, its legs, its tail, and its head are adjustable, and there's a button for chomping. Next up, we've got another T-Rex figure. This one's pretty similar to the one that we just saw, except it's got some slightly darker coloring, darker brown on the top, and of course the jaw chomping button. Over here is an herbivore dinosaur. This is the Pentaceratops. It's got a huge variety of horns on its head and on its frill as well. And it's got two action buttons, one to move the head up and down and one to swing the torso back and forth. Moving right along here, we've got the Sound Surge Carnotaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's check out these sound effects. Up next is a figure that I bought pretty recently, actually. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator. Check out that really cool coloring with the orange fading into the brown and the blue and the orange and red stripes along the top. Up in front here, we've got another giant T-Rex figure. This one is a bright orange color and it has the same movements and actions as the T-Rexes that we saw earlier. This is an Indominus Rex figure, but it's actually not made by Hasbro. It's made by a model company. So it looks a lot different and it has a lot more detail than many of the Hasbro figures. I love those little spikes running along its back and on the top of its head. Right next to that, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This is the Sarcosuchus. It's got a super short and super long body. It's got some really cool spikes that run all the way down its back to its tail. And you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw too. Oh. This next one is an Oranosaurus from Hasbro. I believe this is an herbivore dinosaur. Definitely doesn't look like a scary predator. And it's got some cool coloring on its body. Plus an action button right on the side to move its head up and down. I've got a super bright dinosaur in here. This is a Triceratops. It looks a lot less realistic than many of my other figures, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some red on the top and the blue. Kind of looks like a baby Triceratops. Way in the back here, we've got another Indominus Rex figure, but this one looks quite a bit different. It's got really short legs and a giant head. This is from the Rowdy Roars collection. And it actually has a few different actions. You can get it to shut its mouth. And you can use the tail to hold the head up. Way in the back here, we've got a Krylophosaurus figure with the dark blue and orange coloring. And this figure comes with sound effects that happen when you move its tail around. Up next, let's see, let's go with this Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green and black coloring. And it's got a slide lever action at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This right here is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops figure. It's got some unique coloring with the orange in the front, right next to the dark green, and then some lighter green along the back of its body. Plus it has a roaring action when you press down on its back. Ooh, check it out. Here is a Therizinosaurus figure. 
This has some bright red and some soft blue coloring. Of course, it's got the huge claws on its hands and it has a really long neck and a bunch of small teeth in its mouth too. Over here, we've got a few flying dinosaurs. These are smaller figures. I believe that both of these are Pteranodon figures. This first one's got some cool reflective gold coloring on its head. The rest of its body is like a dark green color. And the second one is more of a grayish color. It still has some yellow on its face, but this one actually has a button on its back to flap its wings. Looks like we've got another big dinosaur in here. This one looks quite a bit different. It's still made by Hasbro, but it's a different toy line than the rest. But check it out, it still has a chomping action when you press down on its body. Looks like we've got yet another T-Rex in here. This one is the dark green with black detailing along the top and is one of my personal favorites. Its limbs are adjustable just like the other T-Rexes and it has the jaw chomping action. Check it out, here is the second Therizinosaurus of the collection. And this one is made by Hasbro for the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got a bunch of cool feather texturing all over its body with the red stripe. And it has a jaw chomping action that you can activate by pressing the button on its tail. Oh, look at this, way down here, we've got a Lego collection. Uh, this might be a Carnotaurus, I think, because it's got those two huge horns at the top of its head. It's got some pretty crazy coloring overall though. It's got bright blue, some neon orange. Check out those yellow eyes too. Here's another Pteranodon figure, but it is way larger than the ones that we saw earlier. You can unfold its wings to show the full wingspan and check out the detailing along its body, which is pretty neat. And it's got two action buttons on its back, one for the jaw and one for flapping its wings. I've got another big Lego dinosaur in here. This one might be a Baryonyx, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what dinosaur species you think this is. In the back here, we've got a good old Ankylosaurus figure. This one has the blue top with the spikes all over the top and the sides and a slide lever action to swing its tail around. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure. This is a basic series Dilophosaurus, so there's no action button, but it's still got some ginormous frills in the front with a huge yellow crown and a dark red body with adjustable limbs. Looks like I've got some Velociraptor figures in here as well. Let's check out these three. This first one is an extreme battle damage Velociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Check that out, you can turn it on and off. There's also the Velociraptor blue figure with opposable legs, arms, and mouth. And there's this crazy looking Velociraptor that has some really cool detailing along its back. Plus, it's got some golden eyes too. Up next, we've got the Majingasaurus. This figure is a little bit bigger than the Velociraptor figures and it's got some yellow, blue, and green on its body. Plus, you can use the tail to move the head around. In the back here, we've got what looks like a Brachiosaurus figure with dark red and some yellow detailing along with the black too. Check out those green eyes. I found another Velociraptor figure. This is an older figure. It's got the tan with the green striping, but unfortunately there is no action button on this figurine. Here's another Velociraptor figure from the same era. This one has the dark green with black stripes on the top and the yellow underbelly. But once again, sadly, there is no action button on this figure. Check out this weird looking dinosaur. This figure is designed to hang onto your finger and it actually is battery powered with sound effects and with movement. Over here, we've got the Sauropelta with the light green and dark green coloring. Here is the Zunoceratops figure with the yellow and gray coloring. It's got the two huge horns on its head. There's also a few Pachycephalosaurus figures in here. This one has battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And the other Pachycephalosaurus actually has a headbutting action when you move its tail. Here's another winged figure. This is a Dimorphodon. It's got the fiery red and orange coloring on the underside of its wings and the dark green along the top. Oh, look at that. There's actually another Sauropelta figure right here. This one has the brown and clay red coloring. 
Next up is a small figure. This is a Gallimimus, although it's got some pretty detailed coloring running along its back all the way to its head. Here's a Stiggy Malak figure. It's got a hard head just like the patchy cephalosaurus, but it's also got some spikes coming out right behind it. And on this figure, you can use the tail for the headbutting action too. Ooh, right over here, we've got an Atrociraptor figure. This one is tan and it is in the stealth pose. You can see it's crawling along the ground. This one looks to be like a Kentrosaurus figure. This one was not made by Hasbro, so it looks quite a bit different but it's still got those iconic horns coming right outside of the shoulders. Up next is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. Check out that super bright and colorful frills. Now here's a teeny tiny dinosaur figure. This is from the Snap Squads. And this is a Triceratops figure. Look at that, it's even got teeth on the inside. That's a nice little detail. And the last figure in this first bin is the Elephrosaurus figure. I think this one's pretty recent, came out in 2023. Let's dive into our second bin of dinosaur figures right here. But before we do, let's check out these officially licensed Jurassic World Heroes of Gujitsu figures. This first one is a Mosasaurus figure. It's got a chomp attack action. It looks like it has fish on the inside or something like that from that picture. So let's open it up and check it out. Here we go, and wow, this thing is extremely squishy and stretchy. It also comes with that chomping action, so you can snap its jaw shut, just like that. But the biggest feature of this is its gooey body. Super squishy, it's still got the texture like a normal Mosasaurus, and it's got its fins as well. But when you squeeze it, let's see what's on the inside of it. All right, there is fish bones in there. That is super crazy looking. Wow, they're just floating in all that goo. It's pretty relaxing to squeeze, actually. That's really cool that they actually put something inside the goo, so you can only see it when you expand it. The other goo jitsu figure that I got for Jurassic World is this Pyroraptor. It also has the chomp attack action, and instead of having goo on the inside, this one is super stretchy. So let's open it up and see. Oh yeah, this one feels totally different from the Mosasaurus. It's actually like pretty hard. You can squeeze it and it moves, but it doesn't have the goo on the inside like the other figure does. You can open and close its mouth for that jaw chomping action. And this one has some feather texturing on its body as well. It has some huge feathers on its arms. Now this figure is supposed to stretch really far, so let's see if we can stretch it. Oh, look at that. There are some different things on the inside of even this figure. Wow, that is super stretchy. It's really strong and hard to stretch. Let's see if we can find out what is that. It looks like feathers are on the inside of this figure. All right, let's get back to our regular figures. I've got an Albertosaurus figure right here with the green and the orange striping on the side. It also has a chomp button on its tail too. Here is the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. It's got the classic gray coloring with a little bit of brown and spikes all over its body. And of course, some really cool sound effects. Here's a pretty new figure. This is the Siamosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It stands on all four legs. It has some pretty cool paint detailing on its body. It's got a huge spine, just like a Spinosaurus, and a jaw chopping action by pressing the button on its tail. Back here is a Carnotaurus figure with a dark brown and black coloring. It's got a little bit of battle damage right on its nose, and it has posable legs, arms, and a tail, and you can use the tail to move the head around too. Check it out, here is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. This one is way more poseable than the standard figures. And I think this one looks a bit more lifelike because of how detailed it is. Look at all that wear and tear on its horns. That's really cool. This is the Tarbosaurus figure. It's got a mostly dark body. It has some black striping along its back. And the brightest part is its neck and its chin. It's also got these really cool huge spines that run all the way down its tail. And of course, a button on its tail for the chomping action. <laughs> Up next is the Carcharodontosaurus figure. This figure too has some spikes running down its back to its tail. And it also has an action button for the chomping action too. Plus, all of its limbs are posable too. From Jurassic World Dominion, this is the Rajasaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than some of the other Predator figures, but it has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. 
This is an aquatic dinosaur. I believe it's called the Kronosaurus. It's got some huge teeth in its mouth, as well as some teeny tiny ones. And it has an action button on its back so you can swing its head back and forth. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure. This one looks quite a bit different though. It's a lot more bright in color. Its spikes on its back are this gold color. The horns are also a bright color too. And it has this really big action button on its back for chomping. Way back here is an herbivore. This is the Cynoceratops with the light green and the bright yellow coloring. And this figure has a roaring action when you press down on its body. Oh, look at this. This is actually another Cynoceratops figure, but this one is in the gray and tan coloring. And instead of just a simple roaring action, it actually has a tail that moves the head around with sound effects. Here is the Parasaurolophus figure. It's mostly yellow, it's got some brown striping with two action buttons. One controls the head, moves it up and down, and the other button controls its tail. Check it out, we've got another Lego Jurassic World figure. This one, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus figure because it's got a huge body that walks on all four legs and it's got this really long and flexible neck. Pretty cool, it's got some cool slash detailing on its body and it's pretty large for a Lego figure. Next up is the Metriocanthosaurus figure in the yellow and green color. Let's check out that chomp action. Back here is a model T-Rex figure. Looks like it's an orange color. It's got some really cool muscle detailing all over its body. And here's another Lego figure. This one though is a T-Rex. Check that out. It's a dark brown color. It has some darker brown detailing all over its body. And you can even open and close its jaw. This next figure is not a dinosaur. It is actually a human inside one of those balls from the Jurassic World movie that you can drive around in. It's pretty cool. This is a baby Brachiosaurus figure with the gray and purple-ish color on the top. Well, let's check out these Stegosauruses next. I've actually got quite a few in here. This first one is a newer one. It's got the brown, green, and clay red coloring. And it has the action when you press down on its spine, it swings its tail back and forth. Down here somewhere, up here it is, is the baby version of that Stegosaurus. It's got the same type of coloring with the green and the clay red on the top, but it is a whole lot smaller. Look at that, even its tail is really small. Let's see what other Stegosaurus is. Here's one. This Stegosaurus is brown, it's got some tan and green, and this one has two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button does the classic tail swinging action. And we've got another Triceratops in here. This one is in a gray and darker gray color. It's got the light pink underbelly. And of course, the tail slashing action. Oh, look at that. I've actually got another one with identical coloring in here. So this one is actually just a twin. Here's another large dinosaur. This one's actually really cool. This is a Velociraptor beta figure. And it's pretty cool because it has some lifelike movements. You can have it walk side to side like this, and you can even have it chomp by pressing down on its body. I've got another Ankylosaurus figure in here. This one has the gray, green, and brown coloring, plus a button for the tail swinging action. I see a few Baryonyx figures in here. This first one, I believe, is Baryonyx Grim, or Limbo, maybe? I actually can't remember their name. It's got the bright green coloring, and the action button on the top for chomping its jaw. Here is the second Baryonyx figure in here with totally different coloring. I love the bright blue coloring along the top of its head and the slide lever action for the roar and sound effects. And the third Baryonyx is right here. It's got battle damage on its neck and on its leg. And of course it has a button for the chomping action. Looks like I've got a few Ceratosaurus figures in here as well. This first one I think is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the iconic red coloring running all the way up to its head with the slide lever action for roaring and sound effects. And this other Ceratosaurus is actually a Hammond collection figure. It's got some pretty similar coloring to the Ceratosaurus we just saw, but its limbs are way more poseable and I think there's a bit more texturing on its skin too. 
Hidden in the bottom here is another Carnotaurus figure. This one is from the Fallen Kingdom collection, so it's actually a bit older than a lot of these other figures. And it's got the button on its back for the chomping action. Let's see, what's next? Let's go with this Allosaurus figure. We haven't seen that many Allosauruses in this collection, but this one is probably one of my favorites because of its color. Plus, it's got those little spikes on the top of its head that run down its back. And of course, a slide lever action for roaring with sound effects. Here's another ginormous winged dinosaur. I believe it's actually another Pteranodon figure. Once its wings are opened up, you can see that there are two buttons, one for its mouth and one to flap the wings. This next figure is the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's press that button on the top of its head. Oh, you know what? Here's another Atrociraptor figure, and I got this one pretty recently too. It has some really cool bright red coloring along its arms and on its shoulders, and it's got this interesting backpack tracker system on it too. Down at the bottom here, here's another one of those figures that fit on your finger. But just like that, they rest on your finger, and they have sound effects and movement too. Look at that, even its eyes blink. This next figure is a classic Triceratops figure. It's got some bright red coloring though, which is a cool feature. I've also got another Stegosaurus in here. It's got some pretty realistic coloring and some bright spines. Aww. Here is a very small Parasaurolophus figure. It's got some cool brown coloring with some lighter brown on the sides, and it looks like it has some tiny yellow eyes. <laughs> This next figure down here, I believe, is called a Protoceratops. This is a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got some bright coloring all over its body too. Up next, I think I've got a couple Herrerasaurus figures. This first figure is a battle damage one that you can open and close right on the side. And this other figure is not a battle damage edition, but it has some gray and white detailing. I've also got a bright Monolophosaurus figure right here, and it has a chomping action that's activated by moving the tail. This one's pretty cool. This is actually a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which as it turns out, may be fictional from the Jurassic Park movie. I've got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one looks a lot like Velociraptor Blue, but it's not made by Hasbro. Still got the iconic blue stripe running down its side. And there's also this similar looking Velociraptor. It's got some white with some black spots on its body and a little bit of red along the top of its head. And this one is made by Mattel. It features some bright red coloring with purple stripes running down the sides. All right, only a few left. This one, I'm actually not sure what it is, but it looks like it's holding an egg. Maybe it's stealing it. Comment below if you recognize this dinosaur species. Here's a crazy looking dinosaur that walks on all four legs. It looks kind of like a sarcosuchus, but I'm actually not sure. And this figure is really feathered. Check out all that feather design on its tail and on its arms and its back. And it's got a pretty wild looking head too. Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we are checking out all of my newest Jurassic World figures. I've got ones from Jurassic World Dominion and even sooner, like these dino trackers right here. So to start it off, let's check out these ginormous figures in the back. This is the Brachiosaurus figure from the new Jurassic World Dominion. It has the same shape and texturing as the older figure, but it has a different paint job, especially this painting right here. It's reflective blue. Over on the other side is an even more massive dinosaur. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure, and it is one of the biggest and longest figures I have. I mean, check out that length from the tail all the way to the head. Next up, I've got this huge Giganotosaurus figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This figure is the same size as many of my T-Rex figures, or maybe even a little bit larger, and it's got a torso Terran action and a jaw chomping action. Speaking of T-Rexes, I've got a really cool one right here. This is the new Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. Every single part of its body is poseable and adjustable, and I really like the face and the mouth. This next one is a super recent one. This is a gigantic Trackers Stegosaurus figure. I think it has much more realistic coloring than many of the other Stegosauruses that I have, and it comes with this awesome new backpack too. Aww. 
Next up is a slightly smaller dinosaur. I believe this one is called a Sinotyrannus. This one is also from the new Dino Tracker series. Check out that crazy looking headpiece that it comes with. Plus it has two action buttons for jaw chomping and for swinging the tail. Over here is a pretty evil looking dinosaur, I think. This is the Diabloceratops. It's pretty similar to a Triceratops, except it's got four huge horns on the top of its head and these hidden ones on the side of its head. And it's got sound effects, as you can hear. Here's another super new one that I think is also from the Dino Tracker series. This one, I believe, is called the Dryptosaurus. It's got poseable arms, legs, and a tail, and there's a lever you can press on its back for the roar sound effects. Now this is one gigantic dinosaur figure. This is a Pyroraptor, and this one's actually pretty special because it is battery operated and you can actually kind of train this dinosaur. Check it out, its eyes light up and it kind of has a personality of its own. You can tap it on the head here. You'll see that it'll respond to you. There's quite a few different modes that this toy can go into. I think this one right here is its feisty mode. Up next, we've got an Ampelosaurus figure, which is a pretty unusual looking dinosaur. It's got tons of spikes and a really long neck, and you can open and close the jaw with the button on its tail. This scary looking dinosaur is called a Yang Chuanosaurus, and it is also from Jurassic World Dominion. It has posable arms, legs, and a tail, and you can actually use the tail to move the torso around and open and close the jaw. Back here, we've got a quite large Velociraptor. This one, I think, is Velociraptor Beta. And this one's pretty special because you can press down on its body for a chomping action. And you can push it side to side as if it's walking. Up next, we've got another dinosaur from the Dino Tracker series. This is a new Endoraptor figure. This is probably one of the larger Endoraptors that I have, and this one is battery powered, so it has some roar sound effects too. Over here, I've got a classic looking Stegosaurus. This one was released as part of Jurassic World Dominion. Plus, this figure actually came with a baby Stegosaurus. And that's pretty cool. Look how similar they are in the color. I've also recently gotten some Sound Surge figures from Jurassic World Dominion. This first one is the Tyrannosaurus Rex Sound Surge. Over here is the Giganotosaurus Sound Surge figure. There's also the Carnotaurus Sound Surge figure. It's pretty plain in color, but it's got some sound effects. And finally, for the Sound Surge, I just got this new Indominus Rex figure. It still has some pretty awesome texturing and detailing, very much like the larger sized figures. And let's hear that sound effect. All right, let's check out these new figures now. This first one is the Geniodectes Cirrus from the Dino Tracker series. Now this figure's pretty small overall. It's got some tiny front arms and larger back legs, but it has some pretty cool coloring. It's got this yellow that runs all the way down its belly to its tail, along with the brown that's on its legs and on its back. And even though this figure is really small, it still has an action button for chomping the jaw. And our other brand new figure is the Herrerasaurus from the Dino Tracker series. This figure is also pretty small. It's got larger front arms and still the super large back legs. It's got three different colors on its body, the gray on the head, and then the bright orange and brown in the back. And this figure also has an action button for a head ramming action. This is pretty cool. I have some Herrerasaurus figures from an older series like Camp Cretaceous, so it'll be interesting to see how different they are. On to the next one. This one is a Ceratosaurus figure from the Hammond Collection. So this figure is super poseable on all parts of its body, and it has some pretty decent coloring as well. <laughs> This next one is also from the Hammond Collection, and I bought this one super recently. This is a Triceratops figure. It's mostly a dark brown color, but you can see that there's little splotches and small details of different colors. This is probably one of the coolest Triceratops figures that I have. 
Over here, I've got an Iguanodon figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got posable front and back legs, and it has sound effects and a head ramming attack too. This is the Rajasaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the short front arms and the huge back legs, and it has a chomping action. And I've actually got another Rajasaurus from the same series, but they released it with different colors. So this is a very dark blue, and then some white, and some interesting purple spikes on the top of its head. You probably recognize this from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the Therizinosaurus dinosaur. It stands on its two back legs. It has these huge claws on its hands. And with this figure, you can use the tail to control the torso and for a chomping action. Oh, it looks like we've got another Triceratops figure in here. This is from Jurassic World Dominion as well. It's got a super bright color right on the front of its frill. And it comes with sound effects, as you can hear. Let's check out that head ramming action. This next figure is one of my favorite ones that I've bought recently. This is a huge Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This one's probably twice the size as some of my other Allosaurus figures. Plus, it's got battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. And not only that, but it also has an attack button on its back for chomping. Over here, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This one walks on all four legs and it has a huge spine. It's called a Siamosaurus. And the best part is you can use the tail to move the head around in a really realistic way, as well as open and close the mouth. I've also got the Mega Raptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It's pretty similar to a Velociraptor, but it has a lot more feathers on its body. And with this figure, you can press down on its body for a chomping action. I've still got one more giant T-Rex figure in here. This one is from Dominion, and it is an extreme battle damage T-Rex. Check out the battle damage right on the side that you can reveal with the click of a button. Next up is the Scorpio Venator from Jurassic World Dominion. This one also has small front arms and big back legs, and it has a pretty interesting head shape too. Let's check out that chomping action. Next up, this is the Irritator. It's a pretty unusual looking dinosaur. It's got a little spine on its back and a super long and narrow mouth. Oh, and it looks like I've got one more Hammond Collection figure in here. This is the Baryonyx from the Hammond Collection. And just like the others, it is super poseable on all parts of its body. Here is also a Dimetrodon with battle damage right on the side that you can activate and hide. And finally, this is a Rugops Primus from Jurassic World Dominion. Check out all that feather texturing all over its body. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.